Now, it's fair to say that 2020 probably hasn't panned out the way that you'd hope for, but all the more reason to make merry this festive season. If you are a bit tired of pumpkin spice, though, I'm here to help you broaden your Christmas cocktail horizons. Of course, we have something creamy and indulgent for you, but we also have something a bit fresher and something a bit boozier, all the while sticking with those lovely warming Yuletide flavors. And I'll even show you what I drink here in Australia on summer Christmas morning in a little bonus make at the end. Before we get started though, um, I just want to take a moment to thank you all as well. It's been a really incredible year for us here at Behind the Bar and it's all thanks to you guys for watching, liking, subscribing and of course to our generous Patreon supporters who've helped us get through a pretty difficult few months. A very popular spin-off of the gin-based Alexander cocktail, it's hard to look past a creamy and decadent Brandy Alexander for a festive treat. If you got some brandy out to light the Christmas pudding on fire anyway, you really may as well. I've spiked my version with a little coffee liqueur too to make sure that you don't nod off on the couch before your granny goes home. May as well start with the coffee since that's how I like to start everything. We've got 15 mils of coffee liqueur. As I said, definitely not necessary. It's just a little twist of my own that I like to do. And then we've got 15 mils of creme de cacao. Then we're gonna go 30 mils of cream. It is quite a good little hack to do the cream before something else. So then you'll get the cream almost rinsed out of your jigger and it should be a little bit less messy. And then 30 mils of brandy. Something pretty young and fresh and fruity to shine through the cream. It really doesn't have to be anything too fancy. Then we're gonna fill your shaker tin with ice. Pop your tins together, make sure you've got a nice straight line. You obviously particularly don't want anything creamy exploding all over you. Then just use your Hawthorne strainer to hold your ice back in the tin and pour through the fine strainer. As with all creamy drinks, you do want to fine strain it just because it helps to preserve that really smooth texture. And then I'm just gonna take a little piece of nutmeg and give it a grate over the top. And there you have it, the Brandy Alexander. Creamy and decadent may be the first thing that you think of when you think of Christmas drinks but it can be a really long day and a lot of calories. So I do like to drop something a little bit fresher into the mix as well. Apple and pomegranate are so evocative of autumn and winter time to me. So even though this is classic sour proportions and so still quite fresh, it feels really warming with the added bonus of it not actually being warm since Christmas day often hits about 40 degrees Celsius over here. The Jack Rose has been around since the early 1900s, but has a resurgence recently and thankfully so. So no garnish to prepare on this one, but we are gonna squeeze some lime juice first. 25 mils, which is about one kind of small-ish lime, which is all we have at the moment. 25 mils doesn't really translate to uh, the imperial measurement system that well, so usually just kind of say three quarters of an ounce. So we go 25 mils of lime juice and the same amount of your grenadine. 60 mils of your Laird's Applejack. Might be a fresher cocktail, but you know, it's still Christmas. So nice, generous measures here. Then we're gonna fill our shaker tin full of ice, pop your tins together and shake as hard as you can. Just use your Hawthorne strainer to hold the ice back and then pour through the fine strainer. Although that's pretty optional for this one. Nice bright one. So there you have it, a Jack Rose. Now continuing our apple theme, but in a bit more of a boozy way, this next cocktail can even be tweaked and served hot for you Northern Hemisphere dwellers. 
The Trico is another modern classic from legendary bartender Dick Bradsell. It's essentially a rum old fashioned with an apple juice float, so what's not to like? My top tip is to use black walnut bitters, which really adds to the festive feel with that little nuttiness. And then you've got the chewy rum and warm apple notes. So we're gonna start off with our 10 mils of Demerara sugar syrup. And then a couple of dashes of black walnut bitters or whatever kind of bitters you're using. Okay, that was four, but they're not, it's a full thing, so it's not coming out very much. And then we go 60 mils of your dark rum. I do like using pussers in here because I don't find it as sweet as some other uh, kind of molasses based dark rums. It's got that little bit of kind of savory funk to it that I think works pretty well with everything else that we have going on in here. And that's everything you need because we'll do the apple juice at the end. I'm obviously always saying to do your garnish first, but I've just forgotten to do that. But at least I don't have any ice in my glass yet, so it's not too much of an issue. I've caught it just in time. And I'm just gonna do a nice and rustic orange peel on this one. And then we'll pop some ice in our mixing glass. Give it a little stir, so just pop the back of your bar spoon against the inside of the mixing glass and push the ice around. We're not actually going for heaps of dilution on this one because you're obviously adding in the apple juice, which is going to kind of lengthen it out a little bit and it's being served on ice. Just get your nice big piece of ice into your um, glass there and then strain over the top. And then last but not least, we just want our 15 mils of apple juice. It doesn't really float properly, but I always just pour it over the top of the spoon anyway. Just gonna give our little twist a sharp fold over the top of the drink. I just like to pop it in there, nice and rustic. Nobody really wants to be working too hard on Christmas. And there you have the treacle. As delicious as all of these drinks are, I do have to be completely honest with you here and fess up that my Christmas actually tends to involve a lot more wine than cocktails. After the hectic December that us folks in hospitality have to endure, the last thing that I tend to want to do is actually spend Christmas Day making drinks as well. So in fact, with my adoptive Aussie family, we have a rule that we only drink out of magnums, less bottles to open and it makes us feel very fancy. I love Christmas traditions and the past couple of years I've spent Christmas morning with my partner's family. They've introduced me to a really simple twist which absolutely complements the Prezi opening process perfectly. Mimosas are great because just like Bloody Marys, they make it socially acceptable to drink at breakfast time. However, I do tend to find that orange juice can be a little bit cloying. So enter the grapefruit mimosa. This tradition actually started in Los Angeles where my sister-in-law started hosting Christmas for her family um, and she had a grapefruit tree in her garden. And it does taste best with fresh grapefruit juice, of course. But of course, they're not always gonna be in season or you might not be able to get your hands on them. So just try and use the most fresh bottle version you can find and it'll still go down very well. But you do want that real kind of pithy, bitter thing going on too. So first of all, we are gonna have to squeeze our fresh grapefruit juice, which could be um, a little bit of a trial because this, this grapefruit is literally the size of my head. I thought this guy was finally gonna come into its own, um, but it's not even gonna be big enough for it. So we might have to do it in quarters. And yes, before you ask, we do have an actual juicer at Christmas time and not just a hand juicer and, you know, one person standing there all day doing this. So we're going to fill our little lovely little champagne flute to about halfway with your grapefruit juice. And then go for a dry sparkling. I'm obviously using cava for that little Spanish twist, but really anything is fine. If that doesn't sound like Christmas, then I don't know what does. And just fill it up to the top. Now you can absolutely be a little bit fancy with this if you wanna do a grapefruit twist before you squeeze them, um, or also some fresh herbs in there can be really nice. Rosemary actually goes really well, or thyme. But again, being perfectly honest with you, we tend to keep it pretty simple and just get straight to the presents after that. Grapefruit mimosa. So now you know. 
There you have it, a Christmas cocktail for every taste. Have a wonderful festive season and please let me know which one you go for or indeed if you attempt them all. Cheers. <laughs>